I have a really good friend, a really, 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 really good friend. Her name is Carol. We've been friends for over 50 years. That's a long time. She's a really, really good friend to me because she's put up with me for that long. She's very reticent, very shy. She doesn't talk a lot. I like that in a person. <laughs> and have often felt led to be her voice. <laughs> she was uh, diagnosed a year and a half ago with breast cancer. My reticent little friend entered in with uh, great trepidation. But I was amazed to watch what happened in her infirmity as that which frightened her um, suddenly began to cause her to straighten up, to rise up stronger inside. And we were all thrilled when she got the all clear and all devastated when word came to us that they had found more cancer, only now it was in her shoulder, it was in her lung, it was in her liver. She, who had straightened up, began to bend over in great grief and sadness. And I anticipated that, for I walked next to her bent over as well as I suffered with my precious friend. But then I recognized after a while she wasn't straightening back up, that the sadness and the depression had gotten such a grip on her, she didn't know how to get loose from it. And I was weeping and praying for my friend, and I had my Bible, and I, I was saying, oh God, there, there are no words that I could speak that could reach deep enough in, into the life of my friend. I, I want to say something to help lift her up. I know you are the lifter of our head. And, and I want to say something meaningful enough that it will go so deep, it'll go right into the marrow of her bones. But I don't, I don't have those kind of words. I haven't been where she's at. I don't want to say something trite. I don't want to say anything that adds to her agony. And so as I prayed for direction to Scripture, I found myself at Genesis 1-3, and God said, let there be light. And I said, yeah, yeah, I know that one. I know that, Lord. I, I know that. That's when I get my makeup out. <laughs> and he kept taking me back, let there be light. I said, Lord, that's, that's a bright verse. It's bright. But I, I need something really powerful. Have you ever counseled the Lord? <laughs> I don't recommend it. I'm like confessing it. And I said, Lord, you remember the Psalms. They're poetic and deeply comforting. There must be something there. And inside my spirit, I heard, let there be light. <laughs> so I called Carol up. Carol? Yeah? Um, I have a word for you from Scripture. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let there be light. She went, oh. Is that it? 
basically. I said, you know, I, I was meditating on this, and, and here's what I was thinking, that those are the first recorded words that God allows us to hear that he spoke through his lips, so they must be powerful. Let there be light. I said, make it a prayer. Just every time you think of it, go, let there be light. She said, okay then, nice talking to you. And so we hung up and she began saying it over and over again. She said every time it came to her mind, which was frequently because she couldn't get over, that's what I offered her. And so she kept saying, let there be light, let there be light. Oh God, I don't know what it means, but let there be light. And she called me up about a week and a half later and she was so full of joy. I hadn't heard her with that much joy for so long. And she said, Patsy, wait till you hear what happened. She said, it didn't even hit me at first. She said, I was at the doctor and I had had another um, uh, scan of my bones. And, and she said, the doctor said to me, what we're looking for when we check this are flashes of light because that's where your antibodies are defeating the cancer. I didn't know that. Hello, I didn't know that. She didn't know that. God knew that. There's so much we don't know. There's so much our friends don't know. But God knows, and he longs to use his spirit to direct us in it. He bids us come to him. He sees our infirmity. He understands our weakness, and he longs to touch us. Carol knew she was not healed. It was the personalization that God would give her exactly what she needed at the moment that she needed it. God gave this woman a voice, and she used it to praise him. He gave her a new view, 18 years of looking at the ground, and the first thing she sees is the lifter of her head. And I encourage you to use your voice in praise, to ask him to give you a voice, and then to expand your view in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>